Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast channel. Now today we're talking about debt, how to reprogram your mindset about debt, okay? Now I want you to ask yourself these questions. How do you feel about debt and who helped cultivate and develop that perspective, okay guys? So without a further ado, let's dive in. This is Conversations That Lead to Greatness. And I'm Lester Smith. And we're committed to helping you guys tap into your greatness by uploading great episodes on a weekly basis that educate, motivate, and yes, inspire you to create the life God desires for you, okay? okay? Now, today we're talking about reprogramming your mindset about debt. Mm -hmm. Now, we actually have two of our high rating videos, and we combined the two topics. One of them was, um, what was it? How do you feel? Oh, how to use debt to get rich. And the other one is reprogram re reprogramming your mindset. Mm -hmm. So we're just combining the two. Okay, mm -hmm. guys? So okay. let's get started. Okay. Reprogramming your mindset about debt. Yeah. First, I want to talk about debt mm -hmm. um, as in the definition. Like we all know good debt versus bad debt. Mm -hmm. We also know no, assets. No, we all don't know that. Well, yeah. If you watch this video, our video about um, using debt to get rich, you know. Yeah, well, you got, so, we, well, we got to assume they're watching us for the first time. Okay, well, yeah. if you're watching us for the first time, mm -hmm. go ahead and watch that other video. I'm going to link it at the end of this video. Okay. And it's titled, How to Use Debt to Get Rich. Okay. okay? Watch yeah. it. Um, yeah. But before we get started, also, hit that like button, y'all, and hit that subscribe button. Yeah. Okay? It's time. Yeah, it's time for you to now. just hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Now. Good debt versus bad debt. Okay. Assets versus liability. Okay. Let's define them. Okay. Go ahead. An uh, asset is something that puts money in your pocket. What? A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the killing thing is a lot of people buy, well, a lot of people buy things and they're thinking it's good debt mm -hmm. because it's an investment. Yeah. Oh, it's an investment. But then correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Is it true to say that somehow your mortgage can become bad debt can become a liability um and the reason being because a lot of people oh when i go up and get this mortgage get this mortgage and you throwing all this money into it and you're not making money mm -hmm. now say for instance you do get um a mortgage that's like we always say start from the bottom grow your way up mm -hmm. then it becomes a asset because then is you can either um Sell it for more than what you pay for it, or you can rent it out. You can put Toro, I mean not Toro, but Airbnb. Airbnb. It's mm -hmm. so much you can do to bring money into your pocket mm -hmm. versus going to get a mortgage that's way up here. Well, in, in the beginning, a mortgage is an asset. It's a, okay. I mean, a, a, liability. a liability. liability. Yeah, it's not an asset until yeah. you pay it off. It's, yeah, it's, and then it still could be, it's still a liability, really, to okay. be honest with you. Even, even with, the pay, with it paid off, because the reason being is taking money out your pocket. Every single month, you're losing money. Because it's taking money out your pocket. Exactly. Even though even though the price of it is going up, uh -huh. and then you can one day sell it for more than what you paid for it, all that, all that money you still put in that house. Okay. Let's say, okay, let's say this. As far as the maintenance of a house, the, the yard man coming to cut it, stuff that happens that you might have to replace the roof, you have to repaint it. Yeah, wear and tear. And you're at wear and tear. You know what I'm saying? So all that, the pipe might bust, whatever. So all that's uh, uh, taking money out of your pocket. Gotcha. And so it's not, a, it's not actually... Uh, asset until you start maybe Airbnb it out, right. renting it out, or some kind, something of that nature. Turn to investment mm. property. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. So now we got that understanding. Yeah. Let's talk about reprogramming our mindset about debt mm -hmm. because I know we both grew up um, thinking debt is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like we grew up like your credit score have to be such and such, mm -hmm. and don't get no credit cards because you know it's gonna cause your credit score to go down. You're gonna have this bad debt. And all this stuff, Jandra, that they tell you, you know, once you get 18, mm -hmm. not knowing that only a, I don't like saying poor, middle class, mm -hmm. only middle class people think like that because they're the only ones that have this great credit score and don't, what's the point of having a good credit score and you don't use it? Exactly. Like, just to say you have a good credit, like mm -hmm. a good credit score? Exactly. My mom did that. We actually talked about that today. <laughs> I was like, mama, you got an 850, you bragging, but you ain't using it. Like, let me borrow your credit. Mm -hmm. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's that's what they think about it is like don't get into debt, don't get into debt versus a person that's trying to build wealth and freedom, mm -hmm. financial freedom. They understand debt is a good thing. Give me all the debt. Yeah, I was uh, I read a book and uh, a guy said he he, he overheard uh, Conrad Hilton, which is the owner of Hilton Hotels, mm -hmm. and what the what original owner. 
he heard Conrad Hilton and another guy talking. And the guy was saying that he was thirty thousand dollars in debt, mm -hmm. and Conrad Hilton said, "I'm eighty million dollars in debt." He said, "You talking about your little thirty thousand? That, 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 that ain't nothing." Mm -hmm. He said, "Conrad Hilton told him, the more debt you get in, the more money you gonna make." Yeah. I said, like, "Wow." Like, what? Yeah. How did how did that open up your mind? Because that also go into reprogramming your mindset about mm -hmm. debt. Yeah. Um, how did that open you up and free you to understand that to the point like, oh man, he that's some truth to this yeah. versus like this man crazy. <laughs> hey, that that was that was uh. That was one of the one of the things I read in the book recently. What opened my mind up to it actually was Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. Robert Kiyosaki was talking about uh, uh, getting as much getting as much debt as you can because the uni uh, the uh, United States thrives on debt. It thrives on debt. Yeah, you said the only the only way the economy will flourish is if you get in debt. In debt. And stay in debt. But mm -hmm. you, if you notice, when you think about people who. Um, I don't even want to say the top five percent, but just millionaires. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the I think when the pandemic happened, after like now after the pandemic, it's been the most millionaires ever in the history of the United States, mm -hmm. right? In the history of the world. In the history, yeah, of the mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. and that's because they was giving out so much money. Mm -hmm. It was debt, like everybody debt, everybody taking PPP and all this stuff. Yeah. But they was not using it to go floss, to use it as a liability. Mm -hmm. Liability. Yeah. They was using it to buy assets to make money because they know that I'm gonna use. These are the people money to go make me some money. Mm. I'm not gonna trade my time. And they were smart. Harvard. You had a bunch of them that weren't smart. Well, you know, that happened. They just took them PPP loans and went down in, bought Louis Vuitton bags and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Liabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, liabilities. But what but, but they they just don't know. They could have took went down and got the Louis Vuitton bag, uh, uh from the Louis Vuitton store, took your ten thousand dollars. And, and bought you three or four of them Louis Vuitton bags and put it on bags.com and rent it or whatever, rent, rent, rent my bag, whatever it's called. Yeah, so. And, 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 and hold, held that bag and you can use it on a weekend you want to use it on and rent it out the other weekends. Listen, <laughs> listen. Like, honestly, when you think, like, when your yeah. mind, when you think about debt differently, mm -hmm. it frees you up to different ways to make money. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, you're not even looking at how much it will cost for us the debt, but how how much you can make from the cost of it mm -hmm. if that making sense yeah, to you sense. um so let's talk about what it takes to do to reprogram your mind um about debt what does it take to well, actually do that well, you know like we like we always say you have, you learn that old information mm -hmm. you have to unlearn and you have to relearn mm -hmm. learn unlearn relearn so that old information says that debt is bad debt mm -hmm. is bad my grandma told me to get a credit card put a little gas on it you know what I'm saying? And then pay it off every month. That's the only thing she told me. She said, this, that's how you need to be doing credit squad. Don't do nothing extra. Don't do nothing extra because you, you don't want to have to pay them people all that money. And, this mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, and yeah, all the interest. But if you pay your card off every single month, you won't have to pay no interest, period. So you can run it up ten, fifteen thousand dollars and then you pay that ten, fifteen thousand dollars back by the next month, you have to pay no debt, no, no interest. Yes, and I'm, yeah. I'm glad you said that mm -hmm. because let's talk about two mindsets of that. Mm -hmm. So when your person hear that, that's the first thing you think about when you think about credit cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, the average person, good minds, I mean, the rich mindset or the poor mindset. Mm -hmm. You think about I can run this card up, and long as I pay it off, yeah. basically that's what you think. Mm -hmm. But what happens is people run the card up and they don't have ways to pay it off at the end of the mm -hmm. month. Versus, like, I'm gonna take this and run it up and make it be a make it to help me be able to pay it off. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm gonna go run it up, invest in my business, invest in myself the way I can make money mm -hmm. so I can pay it off. Yeah, instead of going, let me go go to the gallery and just go ball out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the 30 days, the 28 cycle come up. Yeah. And, and you, you pay all this interest. You got to pay all the interest. Yes, yeah. and you paying minimum minimum balance. Like mm -hmm. you paying the minimum statement balance. Not yeah. even statement balance. Yeah. The minimum balance. Mm -hmm. Like your mindset of that is gonna hurt your life. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hurt your credit. It's gonna hurt your um your client yeah. up to you know. Yeah. To get I've got that hole. And, and the thing about it is, you can you can enjoy that bag. Yeah. You know you can you can get that bag if you want to, but flip you a few things to get that bag. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do that, profit. flip you, okay. make, uh, and you buy the bag from profits. Mm -hmm. Don't buy from your hard-earned man that you work for. Yeah. Use them credit cards that uh, you get from them credit card companies to to help you get rich. Now, if you want to buy you a nice bag or whatever you want to buy, it don't matter. You know what it is. Yeah. 
you use the use the profits to buy that. Don't mm -hmm. use your hard earned money. The hard to buy. the hard mm -hmm. hard earned money. Yeah. Now why is it important for you to understand debt? Mm -hmm. um, most people that watch our channel, it's either because you're on a personal development journey and you want to become your highest, greatest self. Mm -hmm. um, so why is it important for that aspect of personal development to get reprogrammed? Mm -hmm. Let's go down. Yeah, well, you have to reprogram your mind on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? You have to re uh, uh, be reading books and all different kinds of stuff to, to reprogram your mind. And... We're on the topic of debt right now, so you need to be reprogramming your mind about debt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Seeing how you could uh, um, get, 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 get you some e-commerce books or something like that, so that all, in order for you to, to reprogram your mind to understand that that uh, getting in debt is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say it's it, it's important because multiple strengths of income. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. it's it's important because in order for you to have multiple strengths, you're gonna have some debt some kind of mm -hmm. way. You're gonna have to get into debt yeah. and to understand that debt is a good thing when done right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important if you're trying to reach financial freedom. It's important if you're trying to leave um, a legacy, a generation of wealth behind for the next generation. It's important because you come from nothing. Mm. And so you don't want to leave nothing. You want to leave something because you came from nothing. So mm. you want to take your struggle, everything you had um, to endure, and use that to push yourself forward to make sure your children's children never have to experience what you experienced. Yeah. Now, I say this... Um, I don't want to say it lightly, but a lot of times people feel that if I give my kids material things, like I didn't have this growing up, I didn't have the shoes, the joints, I didn't have, I wasn't popular. I didn't have all this material stuff growing up. So now that I have it, I'm going to push it onto my kids, not understanding that's material things that's not going to even be, mm. you know, useful for them in their generation. Yeah. But if you understand that, okay, even though I didn't have these, but I have a mindset about debt. And I'm going to use the, my good credit to get me in some good debt so I can pass investment properties down, good portfolios down, um, business, you know, businesses down. Mm -hmm. I can pass that down to them and teach them that, hey, I'm in, mommy and daddy is in $100,000 worth of debt, but this is good debt. Mm -hmm. Look what this is bringing in each yeah. month. Look how we do this. Look how you do that. Yeah. And another important thing is, you we ain't worried about paying off debt. <laughs> when it comes to investment, yeah. like when you become like you don't worry about paying the debt off. Mm -hmm. Especially especially when it comes to like investment property. They say, well, yeah. why you, why would you want to stay in debt for the rest of your life? Well, me, I'm gonna be in, the, in debt for the rest of my life as far as investment properties is concerned. Let me tell you why. Because I'm always be constantly moving up in properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might have started off with a property in the hood. Okay. One day, I'm going to sell that property and move up to a better property in a better neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And as I move up to the next property, the rent going to go up. Mm -hmm. So I'll make more money per month coming into my pocket because I got a better property. And then when I leave that, that property in a nice neighborhood, I'm probably going to want to go to an apartment building, mm -hmm. maybe a four-unit, five-unit apartment building. And I'm going to move up from that apartment building and go maybe to a, a, a 50-unit, a 100-unit, something yes. like that. And then also... Go to commercial commercial units. So I'm always be in some kind of debt. Always. As far as as far as real estate it's is concerned. The way concerned. of life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. need a shirt say debt is the way of life. <gasps> oh, y'all better not steal it. I'm gonna, we're gonna put it out before this video. Yeah. Debt is the way of life. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, yeah. when you do debt right, man, mm -hmm. that's a way of life. Yeah. You're not looking about your heart or money, what's in my account, what's in my account. You mm -hmm. ask any millionaire, any yeah. billionaire, they can't just go to their account and just show that they have millions of dollars in their account. Because mm -hmm. they're they using that money and putting it back into something else to make money. Yeah. So you, we look at money as employees, mm -hmm. as instruments, not the main person. You know what I'm saying? It's like a side, like a side. I don't say side chick. <laughs> but it's like a side chick, you know? I mean, you know, and, and you know the crazy part about it? the main. As I, as I uh, started, I was studying Robert Kiyosaki. If you don't know who Robert Kiyosaki, look him up. Um... He's uh, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the one who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the uh, Cash Flow Quadrant. He wrote a bunch of books, about 20 different finance. books. Yeah. All finance books. So I recommend you look into him. Uh, he's the complete opposite of Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is who I started with. Robert Kiyosaki is who I'm on now. So last time I checked, he had like 10,000 units. 10,000 units of uh, uh, rental properties. Can you imagine 10,000 units and what that brings in per month? 
and he's in debt on every single last one. I was gonna say it ain't he ain't pay cash he, for it. He ain't it. pay he cash ain't for pay. none of them. See what he does, he buy a he buy let's say a hundred unit apartment building. He buy a hundred unit apartment building, let's say he buy it for a million dollars. He go in there and fix all the units up. And then when he fix all the units up, it's now worth two point five million or three million dollars. So now he got a three million dollar asset. He can go back to the bank, yep. ask for a bigger loan, mm -hmm. and say, I need to get uh, this property is now worth 2.5 million and the bank gonna give him a loan for 2 million. Mm -hmm. The million he already, the, the million he started with, he already flipped it. Already flipped. That, and that's what he do every single time. Yep. And, 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 and that's, what I wanna, that's what I want to work my way up to. And this to. is the thing. Yeah. Even though he got that extra two, that extra million, he didn't go pay that off. Yeah. He didn't go say, well, he, since I got the money, let me go pay it he off. He put it in his pocket. He put it in his pocket until his next gig come yeah. around, his until, next investment until come until around. Until his next he got, he got investors that he invests with, and when they come to him and say, hey, I got this investment ready to go, he already got that money got because it. he had already cashed in on he'd it. He already cashed in. And yeah. he letting the people, the people that come rent it out, pay the mortgage mm -hmm. each month. And uh, uh, with investment property, you only have to put 20% down. So it, he didn't even put a million dollars down. He only put $200,000 down. He put the $200,000 down. Nas worth 2.5 or whatever. So he grabbed a million from the bank. Do you understand this? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, that's why I said you can't just skate by that without yeah. going into details yeah. of what he actually walked yeah. out with. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's just say it's $2 million. Let's, yes. say, let's say that the bank gave him $2 million. He, he spent $200,000 on the, on the property. That's what he put down. The property is worth a million. Okay, he going in and fix each unit up. Each unit may be uh, maybe ten thousand dollars to fix up, maybe if that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got a hundred units, so ten thousand times a hundred is what? Yeah, I, mean, we ain't, I ain't gonna. I, I can't do the math right now. But anyway, ten thousand uh, times a hundred, and uh, he might not walk off with the whole million, but he probably walk off with half of that. Yeah. Half of the million, you know what I'm saying? But it's still ready for his next investment it's property. Ready for it. And then it, let's say he wanted to just he wanted to uh, fix them all up and then sell them. Mm -hmm. He could also do that, you know. You when know? I put the bag. Yeah. When yeah. I put the bag. And see, and see, people, people. I know you have to start somewhere, but a lot of people start with the the small property. Start with one single unit. Uh, they, I mean, the, the house, and they fix it up and then sell it. But there's no competition in the bigger units as far as 100 units is concerned. There's no competition because nobody's out here trying to buy them because they don't have the money to buy them. Yeah. Who got, who got $200,000 in their in they bank account to give to the bank? There's yeah. not too many people that have that. And see, they, and they're able to do this over and over again with no problem because they don't have no competition. Yes, and mm -hmm. it's also because they, um, he, it's really not competition because once you get into that field arena, it's that easy realm. for mm -hmm. you to do it. Yeah. Versus someone like when we try, when we go to jump into that, mm -hmm. we're going to have to go through hoops because we never purchased anything up to that um, extent. No, we don't have to go through hoops. You just going to have to have money. Well, yeah, you don't have to have because, money. And the reason I say that is because the bank don't look at your personal assets mm -hmm. when when it comes to uh, um, financing the investment yes. property investment. of that size. Mm -hmm. They don't look at your personal. They look at the, what the what can bring what, in what the money is gonna bring in for the property. Yeah. So they give you the money according to what the property. Uh, they, what they do, they go through that and they look at their numbers and make sure the numbers is good. If the numbers is good, they'll go ahead and give you the loan. Give it to as long you. as you got that down payment, yeah. that 20%. Mm -hmm. That 20%. Yeah, so yeah. it's actually easier to get a property like that than Versus. it is to buy a house. Because they look at the, uh, the investment exactly. is coming in. They're looking at the investment. And let me tell you something. The, the bank will loan you money on real estate every day of the week, any day of the week. They're not going to loan you money on, on cars every day of the week. They're not going to loan you money on, on credit cards, on, on businesses. But they'll loan you on money on, if the, if the investment look right on a, on a piece of property, they'll loan it to you. Yeah, because they, they wait for you to mess up so they can take it. Exactly. And well, go well, sell well, it they're going to sell it again. Yeah, yeah so you know, two, uh, two. No, you know what they do, what they do first? They get the money from it. The insurance pay the money. Mm. Three times. They pay on the money for that property. When you know that that private mortgage insurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that private mortgage insurance pay that property off, and then they just whatever's left over, they they put it on the uh, what you call it, the auction, and and sell, and sell it. it, and then whatever whatever that the bank didn't get back, the insurance company give them that money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Look here. Plus they, the money they, you pay. No lose situation with real estate. Exactly. No lose situation. Yeah. Yes. So all of y'all that's out there thinking about getting into this real estate game, listen. Go ahead on. Don't 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 think too long. Yeah. Don't think because your 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 mindset about debt is gonna snoop back up on you. Mm -hmm. It's best for you to just go like 
just jump. Go even get some more information. Go talk to an investor, uh, mm. a bank investor, a banker, whatever. Go talk and see what's out there, what products is out there, mm. what you need, uh, what's your credit score, what they look at. You know, just go and get the information. Mm. Don't just go and be like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't know. I want to do it, but such and such said this. Listen, yeah. go find out for yourself yeah. and change your mindset about debt. It ain't for you to pay it off. It's for the the other people that you get in now to exactly. pay it off. They're going to they gonna help you get rich that, because you got good credit. <laughs> well, they're going to help you get rich because you got good credit. Because you, know, you and, got and, good and, credit. And a lot of people, they don't have good credit, so they can't buy a house. Right, and right now, it's not the time to buy a house anyway. Ooh. So the uh, long as these interest rates stay high like they is, mm-hmm. the, um, the landlord is getting rich. And the reason being is because... They can't, but the people can't buy a house right now. Yeah. And and the rents are, are skyrocketing right now. It's ridiculous. Especially because, in Houston. Because everybody's trying. It's, it's everywhere. Oh. I don't care where you at. Your, the rent is high right now because everybody need a place to stay and they're not trying to buy nothing right now. They steady building houses, building houses, but nobody can buy them because it's, you know, mm. so a lot of houses is sitting right now. But you know, <laughs> when you mention that, you know, all on six, what we have is two different ones. Well, six and a half with 28. Mm-hmm. How they building these like a community mm-hmm. of rent houses. Yeah. You know, that's what I think that's they're doing now. Mm-hmm. It's a whole community like a like a regular neighborhood, mm-hmm. but it's in a community and it's luxury. All, right all they gonna, you know what they're going to do? Mm-hmm. They're going to keep that particular property. It's, I think it's probably about 100 of them, 100, 150 of them. They're going to keep that particular property until the until the economy get better, and when they, they're gonna rent them out, rent, rent them out, and then they may keep them for five years, mm. if that. Uh, they may keep them for three years, and they're gonna end up selling them, yeah. selling each one individually. Yeah, that's why they did that. It's like lux- it's like luxury houses for rent, mm-hmm. but it's not gonna stay like I that. Know. I promise. And, and you see the way they setting it up. Mm-hmm. They all look like a house is in they in a neighborhood. Yeah, and that's the reason why they set it up like that. So they're gonna that's end up selling so each smart, one. That's smart, man. Yeah. yeah, that's real smart. Like that's how you if, if you. if you got money, if you got money like that. And you can and you can go to the bank and say, hey bank, you know what I'm saying? I got a I got a neighborhood that I'm about to build. Uh, it's probably gonna be worth about um, five million. Let's say five million dollars. The bank say, yeah, well let's do that. Um, you uh, you want to get a five million, whatever twenty percent of five million is. That's two hundred thousand out for each um, out for each million. That's uh, that's a that's a million dollars. A million dollars. So they say, well come on, give us that million, and we're gonna give you five million dollars uh, uh, to to build these properties, to build these houses. But the, what they're going to do, they're going to rent them out for five years, make all that money from the rent, and, and then sell them for more than what they built them what for. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's genius. That's genius. <laughs> I'm telling as, you. As I sat back, and, and I didn't really think about that until, until yeah. we were just talking. You know what I'm saying? God dropped that down off of my spirit. I'm, I'm, I, was, I was really trying to figure out, because i never seen nothing like that before. Yeah. I was really trying to figure out why are they building them like like regular houses. Mm-hmm. Neighborhoods. They building them like that because nobody can buy a house right now. So everybody gonna go in there and rent them out. The rent, they real nice, real, uh, real nice places. The rent is gonna be anywhere from two thousand to three thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. And they are gonna sell them after after about five years when yes. the interest rate go down to about three percent or yes. four percent. And you might say, well, why would somebody go rent a place like rent a house like off, rent a house like that off and pay that much money? Mm-hmm. It's because for one. When you think about mortgage, it's more than just, it's not, it's no fixed amount each month. It's mm. not a fix because your uh, PMI will go up and down. Mm. You got you, the wear and tear fix and stuff. Like, you, you're not in an apartment. So, if anything breaks, you got to, you in charge of that. Roofing, like, you have all these extra expense that come out each month. And when you rent it, you just have this set amount. Mm. And then something breaks, you call the landlord. Mm. That is why. Yeah. Um, the second reason is because as interest rates go up and down, so do your mortgage. Mm-hmm. Like just because when you closed on this day and you pay a thousand dollars, doesn't mean you're gonna pay a thousand dollars for the whole that's expense. How, that's how a lot of people. Uh, yeah, get upside down. Lose their house. Yeah. Because that's... they tell you, they tell you you're gonna pay, be paying a thousand dollars a month. Well, they don't tell you the in, the uh, insurance gonna go up, the taxes gonna go up, everything gonna go up. So that because you pay start paying a thousand dollars this month. I mean, this year, uh, you might be paying 1100 next year. Yeah. And if your, if your income is set on $1,000, that's how you end up losing your house. You lose it. Because you, you, cause you are already in the negative. A lot of people are already in the negative every single month. So uh, if it go up to $1,100 next year, then it's probably going to be 1200 the year after that. Before, before, that um, before that 30 years is up, you're going to end up probably being around 15, 
fifteen hundred dollars mm-hmm. a month, sixteen hundred dollars a month. It all depends on how high the insurance and the taxes and exactly. stuff. Exactly, and the economy. Yeah, and yeah. it also depends if you went to the top of your budget. Mm-hmm. Like that's how we tell people: listen, don't get what you can afford for, like on the top of your budget for us at forty. Get don't even get in the middle, okay? Mm-hmm. Get below. Well, because lot, life happens. Well, a lot of uh, a lot of banks. They'll approve you. Let's let's say that they're going. You going and you say I want to get a loan for a house. They'll approve you for five hundred thousand dollars when you only really supposed to be getting approved for three fifty. You know what I'm saying? You should have took that three fifty and, and and got and got some. And the person that's that's buying the house, they gonna go push it all the way up to the five hundred. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna get a house three fifty or four hundred yeah. or maybe even two fifty. Exactly. They gonna push it all the way to the five hundred. They say I can get it, so I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And then the next year. When the, when the mortgage go up, because they ain't pay no attention to them exactly. taxes and insurance going up, then they, they got to get out. That's how a lot of people lose their house. That's how they lose mm-hmm. it. But if you change your mindset about debt, mm-hmm. listen, yeah, when that mortgage go up, you're going to think up some ways to get that mortgage paid. Yeah. Hey, what can I do? Mm-hmm. What can I sacrifice? If I got these credit cards, what can I use to spend to make these credit cards make me money? Mm-hmm. If I got uh, my investment, pull it out, whatever, what can I use to... You know, make me money. Yeah. It's all about how you think about debt, man. Mm-hmm. Debt is good when it's done right. Yeah. What was I say? I said I was gonna say. What's debt that? is the way of life. Yeah. I gotta yeah. Re- I gotta go back and watch what I said. Yeah, debt is the way of life. It's the way of life. Yeah. So that's why we want to come in and home in on that. And I want to say this too. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. No, no. Go okay. Ahead. Uh, I want to say this too. If if everybody if everybody paid off all their houses and, and all their cars and stuff, the economy would collapse. Collapse. What? It would collapse because the the United States thrives on debt. Mm-hmm. The, that's the only way the banking system can make money. Don't, don't believe the banking system is making money just by your money sitting in the bank. Mm-hmm. No, that's not how it works. When you put $100 in the bank, the bank loans $1,000 out. Yeah. They loan $1,000 out. And you say, how, did, how they loan $1,000 out off $100? Well, they're going to get a loan from another bank. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's a whole world system. It's a system. It's a system. Mm-hmm. They, if, you, if, you, if you don't know what the fractional reserve banking I is, I need you to look it up. Fractional reserve banking. When you when you uh, uh, go get, let's say you go get a, a, a mortgage for three hundred thousand dollars, well, the bank go borrow uh, a nice amount of money. I don't know exact numbers from another bank, and uh, the World Bank or whatever, and, and pay you that, and they just you know got that money coming in. See, yo, hey, you people think their house is an asset. Your house is not an asset. You know, let me say this. You know who your house is an asset to? The bank. <laughs> the bank. It's not an asset to you. No. It's an asset to the bank. Okay, and as you as you and you got, and you know the crazy part about it, you have people out here with these 800, 850 credit scores talking about, man, I got that big credit score and, and this and that, but you're not doing nothing with it, man. You're not doing that. Go get you a house and let and let your house be your asset, or go get you a car and put on tour or something. You know something, or go get you some some kind of something to flip. A commercial property and make it a photo booth mm-hmm. or something. Sipping with it, paint or man, something. Man, it's, like. it's, so, it's so many things out here. What you can do. So many things out here to make money is un- unrealistic. Man. That I, can free you up. Yeah. To yeah. do your purpose. And, and, I, and, I, and I, as I sit back and I'm looking at people and talking to people on a daily basis, because I'm an entrepreneur, I've always been an entrepreneur. So as I'm talking to people on a daily basis, I say, you do what to make money? You do this, you do that, and I'm like, bro, really? That's how I got the, the bag thing, you know, uh, rent, rentmybag.com or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm like, bro, you you rent bags on now? You know, yeah, my wife liked them bags, and, and I, I just rent them, we just rent them out on there, and she just bring the bag in on the weekend, she want to use it, and, and she use it, and then send it back out again. It, because it's always going to be someone who want to look like what they not. Exactly. It's always going to be the job. They have, they have clothes, the uh, clothes, rental places, yeah, and, and shoe rental places, and all that. And I'm like, bro. Always, man. So why not just, you just rent the stuff out? Just I want, if I want it, like this. Yeah. That's and, what I'm thinking. And you know the crazy part about it? The, it's, it you say, well, I don't want to do that. They might steal my bag. The, 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 bag, the bag is insured. The the company that you rented through, they insure the yeah, bag. Insure the bag. So if you if you lose your bag, they they going they gonna pay you for that bag. Yeah. Or wear and tear or something, whatever might happen. Same thing with it. Airbnb, uh Turo, all that stuff is Verbo. insured. All stuff. Of it. Verbo, you know, uh room uh, rooms to go. Is it room? Pure to go? space. Pure space, there you go. Pure space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like pure space. Well I, I was saying we're gonna do something with pure space. Y'all need to look pure space up. Yeah. Well you get a, a room in your house. You decorate it. It don't necessarily have to be in your house. It could be at somebody else's house or down studio, the street, or a studio, uh, studio or something. You rent, uh, decorate it up real, real extravagantly, and people come in there and take pictures. Yeah. They stay in there for one hour, and they're gone. 
Yeah. Just imagine you get you a studio apartment downtown and you decorate it real extravagantly. You know what I'm saying? And then people come in there and take pictures and you paying a couple of grand a month, but you making five or six grand a month. Mm-hmm. And it's not even just for pictures. You can do podcasts. You can have all baby that. showers. All that. You can get an event space. Mm-hmm. It's so like now when the pandemic happened, yeah. it ain't no reason a person shouldn't be a millionaire. Yeah. Or six figures basically. Yeah. It's no reason because yeah. it opened up a whole world of creativity. Yeah. It's too like many, it's too, too many, many avenues. To too it's many ways. Too many ways. Yeah. But it's all about your mindset. Yeah. If you think debt is the end of you or I'm not going to ever get in debt because this is such and such and all this, that old, I don't even like saying slavery, yeah. but that old, old, old mindset of your great, great, great parents, that's going to keep you from your living financial freedom. Mm-hmm. It's going to keep you from that. Yeah. So you have to make up in your mind, like, ask yourself, who helped cultivate my, you know, my way of how I think about debt? Mm-hmm. And then look at them. Yeah. Do I want to live my life like them? Exactly. Or do I want better? Because yeah. if I want to live like them, I can just keep doing and believing in everything they taught me. Yeah, keep doing what I've been doing. Keep doing what I've been doing mm-hmm. and see how it works for you. Mm-hmm. Or if I know, okay, this ain't working for me, let me go and, you know, reprogram and reset my mind to people that's doing what I, that's doing and being and having what I'm trying to do have. Mm-hmm. Go up for the challenge. Man, Why you up for the challenge? Man, look here. Get up for that challenge. We live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a world of consumers. Everybody is buying things nowadays. Mm-hmm. So I have an eBay store. Um, you can do it also on Amazon. Uh, you have Macari. You have uh, that's about a bunch of different a bunch of platforms. A bunch yeah. of platforms you can buy stuff on right now. And the reason I say that is because what's the what's the uh, the, the thing with the closet uh, uh, where they buy stuff out your closet? I don't know what you're talking about. I forgot. Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. There's a bunch of them. But anyway, mm-hmm. I said that to say this: eBay is a platform that I started on. Or just selling stuff out of my house. Mm-hmm. I was just selling, you know, uh, oh, that thing been sitting around. Let me hop on eBay and see what it's selling for. And jump on there. Oh, this selling for that? Okay, let me go and put that on eBay. Yeah. eBay is a big old thrift store. That's, that's, that's all it is. With people that, stuff, that have stuff in their house, used stuff, you know, you can go right there to Goodwill or the thrift store and find some stuff and sell it right there on eBay. Right there. Go, go over there to, uh, to the, to the uh, thrift store on uh, 50% off days mm-hmm. <laughs> and get it for 50% off and sell it right there on eBay. But let me say this. It's a, it's a world of consumers out there. They're waiting. They're waiting to buy something from you. Sales is the highest paid profession in the world. Sales. Think about that. Sales is the highest paid profession in the world. You might think, you might say, well, well, doctors make more than sales. Now, I, got, I know some salesmen that make way more than doctors make, doctors and lawyers and all that. Sales is the highest paid, paid profession in the world. So find you something to sell. Mm-hmm. Find you something to say. You say, well, I'm not a salesman. Well, I, I, you sell yourself every day. You sell yourself every single day. To somebody. Uh, you selling yourself to your <laughs> husband, your wife, your friend. Somebody. Uh, somebody. You got to sell yourself to your kids. You even have to sell yourself to your kids. Yeah. Because they ain't going to believe you if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, give, if you don't give them that good information. Mm-hmm. Be like, well, you got to do it because mommy said so. Mm-mm. Nah, sometimes that don't work. Nope. It ain't going to work. They do what they see. Yeah, that, that ain't going to work. You, know, you got to sell yourself to them on why they shouldn't be doing that and all that good stuff. But yeah, find you something to sell. Find you something to sell. That's the quickest way to get your income up. And to get out of debt. Mm-hmm. Bad debt. Yeah, bad debt. Put bad, bad debt. debt to get out of that. Because you yeah. can't get in good until you get out of bad debt. Exactly. Exactly. You guess that's step number one. Yeah, guys. Hey, man. Hey, man. This is, a, this is a real good topic. I like this topic. Uh, and the reason being is because uh, back in 2010, um, I got out of debt. We got out of debt uh, with my boy Dave Ramsey. And he said, cut all your credit cards up and, and, and get out of debt. Which he, he was right. He was right. I, I needed that foundation mm-hmm. because the, the foundation was bad. And as the foundation was bad, it had all kind of cracks and everything That's in and whatnot. Me. And, and the money was leaking out. And mm-hmm. I said, well, yeah, let's go ahead on to do this. Let's go ahead on and get out of debt. And we got out of debt. And we got out of debt to get in more debt. But then, it didn't even, but this is the killer thing. Yeah. I'm like, what's the debt? Where are we going? Where? Like, what's the debt? Yeah. Like, let's get into yeah, some we debt. Got, we got out of all the debt, out of all the debt, paid off the house and everything. And then we jumped in the bigger house and got back in debt. In, you know what I'm saying? No debt. Now, now I'm realizing that, yeah. that I need to be getting in as much debt as I possibly can. Yeah. So don't be surprised if, if, you, uh, if, you, if, you, if you hit me up next year or the year after next and I'm in $20 million in debt. Hello. Man. And we still smiling. I'm still smiling. We like, still doing Now, my smile, my smile going to be bigger. Right? Because I want to know there's more money coming in if I'm $20 million in debt. Man. You know, I'm going to try to get as much debt as the people let me have. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what it is. Why not? Because they're going to give it to you. They know. Like, Why not? Come on now. 
And, 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 and when, when I pass, if, if nothing ain't paid off, all, all, all they got to do, the kids, all they got to do is turn it in. Let the people come pick it up. Yeah. And y'all just take all of my assets, all of my money that I have, or whatever, and, and, and take that and, uh, and run with it. Mm-hmm. Y'all enjoy y'all you life. You ain't got to pay it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then some people actually have get life insurance. That's a whole other thing. Oh, man. We ain't going to talk yeah, about that's that. that's a whole get life insurance just for that. Yeah. Like, life insurance is not for your funeral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, for your service. And mm-hmm. it's it's for your debt. Okay? Because mm-hmm. we ain't thinking about that. Yeah. It's for your debt. That's so, therefore. Type, right? I, I, ain't t- I ain't tapped into <laughs> that yet, but I'm, I'm definitely going to tap into that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. be like, okay. That's called the... Uh, what is it called? Um, I forgot the name. But uh, something banking system, the financial banking system, or something like that. Listen. So, where you put your money in insurance, and and uh, and uh, you can go in there and borrow the money out of me and pay it back, or whatnot. You can buy a car with that, and then pay it back, and you be paying yourself back instead of paying the bank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the infinite banking system. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I haven't, I haven't looked into that. I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, stepped into that realm yet, but I, I will eventually. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah. guys, as we close out, mm-hmm. please. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Do all three. Wow, um, man, justice and everything. You know, I'm happy. I love this topic. <laughs> Do all three. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the video. We have one on how to use, oh, how to get rich with debt. Mm-hmm. I will put it right here. Yeah. And our other one that's very popular is how to reprogram your mindset. And I will put it down below too. Mm-hmm. Um, those two that? videos. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put the little thing right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. Those two videos is our highest rating. I mean, views. Highest views. Um, and I, it's some good gems. Like, we dropping some good gems. Mm-hmm. And we're not speaking of just because we read books. This is stuff we have actually done. And we are a living truth and living testimony. It's done and still doing. I am mm-hmm. a living testimony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And going to be doing for a long time. Yes, but on yeah. a bigger scale. Yeah. Because at each level, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So, um, yeah, guys. So, reprogram your mindset of, about the way you think about debt. If mm-hmm. you're trying to live about your greatness and become all that God called you to be. God called you to be rich. God mm-hmm. called you to be abundant. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have to have some money and get into some debt to do that. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yeah. Take us home. Papa. All depends on how, how rich you want to be. I the more the be. more debt you get in, the the richer you're gonna be. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know the crazy part about it, Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world, but they got a lot of debt. You say, well, why they got all that debt? Who cares? Who cares? Like, they, they making money. They making buku money. It's, it's the co- it's the buku. questions you answer. Yeah. Like you as you ask the wrong questions. Exactly. Like who cares? Exactly. How much debt you get <laughs> if it's more, if it's less? Uh, if your debt is less than what's bringing in, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's come on now the math. It yeah. get math. Yeah, you you got to put that math together. Oh, you asked for that. Pink, put that pen in the paper. Put that pen in the paper. I don't give a damn how much debt I got. As yeah. long as it's uh keep, you know, profiting. Yeah. Over and over and exactly. over again. Exactly. But anyway, guys, yeah. God is good. Life is good. When we look good, we feel good. We live in a life of abundance. Peace. Bye guys.